everyone. This is Lucas Ross Sports, Lucas Ross, your commentator, and it's time to continue our conference standing slash conference championship predictions. If you have not seen the two other conferences, we gave out the ACC and the Big Ten Conference. We have done those and gave you a conference championship prediction on those, and now we are going to do the Big 12 Conference. I'll give you a conference championship at the end of this video, and Keep on staying tuned for that Top 25 video coming out this Sunday, the AP Top 25 video on this channel. And I will continue to do these football standing slash predictions with the conference championship predictions as well. The Pac-12 is tomorrow and then the SEC on Friday. But let's get right into the Big 12 here on this video today. And we will start from the bottom and work our way to the top. At number 10 is Iowa State. This is a team that, you know, is going to be really young this season on offense. It just comes down to that offense. Defensively, they're going to be also pretty young. They have a lot to replace on that side of the ball. Iowa State overall just a, lost a ton of production last, from last year's team. This team, I have them going 2-10 and 10 overall, 0-9 in the conference. And they have a pretty tough schedule as well. I mean, I don't think I see them getting a win, though, this year in the, in the Big 12 conference. I think this team takes a step back this year, and then they – you know, redeem themselves in the next year. But this season is just really about the talent they have. You know, it's the young talent they have. But I think this team will get better. But it just – it comes down to that offense, and I think that's why they will have a struggling season this season. I'm not saying they're going to be terrible or anything like that, but I think they will finish in last place in the Big 12. Number nine is Candace on this list. Um, Candace is – I have them finishing 3-9 and nine and 1-8 and eight in conference play. I have them at least getting one win in the conference. That comes to Iowa State in the regular season. Now, Candace, I think, will have a lot of close games this year. They have a ton of production coming back on both sides of the ball. Defensively, they're going to be really good. I mean, not explosive. I think they'll be the type of team like Nebraska was last year. But it just comes down to that, you know, comes down to that talent they have. It comes down to that talent they have on both sides of the ball. They don't really have the talent, you know, they don't really have the talent players like they do like with Oklahoma or anything like that they don't really have all the talent they have yet right now but I got Candace finishing at number nine Candace State at number eight here Candace State I think is going to finish five and seven this year three and six in conference play this team does have good production coming back but it just comes down to the schedule it comes down to that schedule schedule is pretty tough for Candace State you know they have to play Missouri out of the non-conference I know it's a home game for them but it will still be a tough non-conference game. Kansas State, though, still has a long way to go before they can really get back into where they want to be. I know they finished 8-5 and five last year, but I think this team takes also a step back this year. Kind of similar to Iowa State. They're not going to be young, but, you know, it's going to be about, you know, the schedule. I think it just comes down to that schedule this year. And I think Kansas State will take a step back. I got number them at number 8 on this list. Number 7 is Oklahoma State. Um, Oklahoma State obviously went to the Big 12 championship last year. They have a lot to replace in the secondary. The defense is going to be, you know, it's going to be about the defense this year. They're going to be young on that side of the ball. Offensively, they should be really good, but their quarterback is just going to have to really stay consistent. And I know Oklahoma State fans are hoping they get back to the, in the into the Big 12 championship. Probably won't happen this year. I think they take a step back from last year. I know they were really good on that side of the ball. That defense was really good, but it's going to take a step back this year with that young talent they have coming back. And I got Oklahoma State finishing six and six and four and five in conference play. Now we go to two six through one. We get, we start with West Virginia here at number six. I have them finishing six and six overall, five and four in conference play. West Virginia is a team that I'm pretty high on this year. Not really that high though, like with the winning season or anything like that JT Daniels coming over from the transfer portal I think he's going to be a big pickup there for West for, for this West Virginia team it just comes down to that offense the offense is going to be really young this year defensively they have a quite a bit of production coming back on that side of the ball I think this West Virginia team will be okay you know they're probably gonna you know won't get they probably won't win six games they probably won't get bow eligible I think the schedule really sets up nicely for them and I think they can potentially pull off some upsets. If they can get good quarterback play, they'll be really good. If JT Daniels can stay consistent, I think he will have what it takes to be a good quarterback in the Big 12 this season. Number five is Texas Tech. 
I'm really high on the Red Raiders this year. I have them going 7-5, and five, going to a bowl game, and also 5-4 and four a conference play. I got Texas Tech ahead of West Virginia because of the winning in the regular season. So I got Texas Tech ahead of them. It was a pretty much a two-way tie between TCU and Texas Tech, but Texas Tech is a team that, you know, isn't, you know, returning a lot on the offense, but I think the schedule really sets up nicely for them. And, you know, they have to play, you know, they have to play like some sort of tough games in the non-conference as well. It's going to be a tough season, but I think Texas Tech can still get to a bowl game. And a lot of their games are pretty much at home. A lot of their hard games are pretty much at home as well. I think Texas Tech, I think that's why they will have a pretty good season. TCU comes in at number four. I'm really high on this TCU team. I have them going 7-5 and five overall, 5-4 five and four in conference play. I think TCU has what it takes, you know, to compete in the Big 12 this season. Yes, I know they lose their defensive coordinator from last year. But this TCU team, I think, is still going to be pretty good. They have a ton of production coming back this year. And with the Big 12 Conference, I think the production, you know, for all these teams are not really that good. I think the Big 12 is not going to be that great this year. I mean, yes, it has a chance to be great, but it just it's going to come down to who wins the Big 12 championship. I mean, whoever's the best team is the in the Big 12 Conference is going to be the you know that team. It's going to be that team that is the best team in the conference. But I got anyway. I got TCU here at number four. Number three is Baylor, the defending Big 12 champion. Here I have them finishing eight and four this year, six and three overall in the conference. I think they take a step back as well this year. I think Baylor, with all the production they lost last year, you know, on the offensive side of the ball especially, is going to take a step back. Or actually not on the offense. I think the defense is what, you know, is going to bother them this year. Defensively, they don't really have a lot of production coming back. Offensively, they do. I think that offense will be pretty good. That offensive line should be pretty good as well. But I think Baylor will take a step back this year with the schedule. Also, they have. It's going to be a little bit difficult for them. I think Baylor will take a step back, though. And I got Baylor here at number three. Texas is at number two here. So I got Texas going to the Big 12 championship. And Texas fans... I actually, I think a lot of these people don't really agree with Texas's prediction this season at ten and two, eight and one in conference play. I know it's, I know it's Texas and all, but you know, I think I'm just really high on this team. I think they'll take a step further this this season. I think they learned from what they learned last year, and I think they have what it takes to really, you know, compete this year. But they have to play Alabama in the non-conference. That's going to be tough. And Texas was not even ranked. In the top 25, I guess due to, you know, the season they had last year. And that's pretty understandable as well, you know, with the season they had last year. Texas went 5-7. and seven. Let's be honest. I know I'm really high on this team, but I think they have what it takes to really compete in the Big 12 this season. And then Oklahoma comes in at number one. I know I should have put Oklahoma, you know, behind Texas. But I think with the wins they have, it's going to put them at number one. Oklahoma is a team that, you know, loses Lincoln Riley. And I know they have a new coaching staff as well. It's going to come down to Dylan Gabriel as well at quarterback. I think with him coming over at UCF, it's a big pickup. I think he's a top 10 quarterback. I know he wasn't really consistent last year. You know, he didn't, you know, play for a lot of the seasons last year and a lot of the games last year. So I think Oklahoma will be back in the Big 12 championship this year. They still have the talent, you know, they, they to compete in the Big 12 as well. And they have to play Nebraska in the non-conference. That game is on the road, but I have them winning that game. I think it just comes down, you know, to the defense for Oklahoma. You know, I think defensively they have a great defense coming back, actually. But I think it comes down to that offense. You know, that offense is going to be pretty young this year, but they should still be pretty talented on that side of the ball. All right, now we go to the Big 12 championship game. This one is in Arlington, Texas. Home field advantage, you know, goes to Texas in this game. This game is at AT&T Stadium. It's going to be an interesting game. It's a rematch from the regular season. And if you didn't know, I had Texas beating Oklahoma in the regular season matchup. So this one's going to be good. It's a revenge game here for Oklahoma as well. But I think it's going to come down to both offenses in this game. At the end of the day, though, with it being at Texas and also, I know it's a neutral site game, but it's pretty much a home field advantage game. I'm going to go with Texas. I think Texas does win the Big 12 this season. I'm not saying they're going to go to the college football playoff or anything like that. I think Texas gets to a New Year's Six Bowl game or something like that as well. But I got Oklahoma. They might miss out on the college football playoff after that one loss to the early season as well. 
due to that early season, regular season loss to Texas. This game, though, I think is going to be close. I think Oklahoma could still potentially make the college football playoff. But that concludes my Big 12 prediction, standings slash conference championship prediction. Tomorrow I do I will do the Pac-12 conference, and then I will do the SEC on Friday. Stay tuned for those videos, and stay tuned for my top 25 video on this Sunday. And stay tuned here for more on Lucas Ross Sports.